Hey everybody, it's Jamie from Plum Island Sea Cabin. I am super excited. I am having my morning coffee and seashells with Michelle Crew. You guys. So I am overwhelmed by the amount of shells that I've been getting. It's like every day I come home and there's a new box of shells on my porch. I'm super happy about it. I'm super grateful. Check all of this out. Oh, but before we get started, I do want to address a couple of comments and questions that I got. The first question was from Suzanne. She wanted to know how I display my shells or if I have any crafty ideas for displaying them. So I'm going to show you how I display my shells. It's pretty organic. I don't do anything special. And the second question was from... Who is that from? Okay, I remember now. So the second question was from Judy. She was interested in that really saturated purple sand that we've been finding on Plum Island. So we have this really purple sand on Plum Island. If you have not seen it in my videos, go back a couple videos and give it a watch. It's very cool, um, but it's very unique to Plum Island. But we did collect a small sample of it because Judy was wondering what it looks like dried out. So I have a small sample, we did dry it out, and I will show you what that looks like later on in this video. And the third question is from Carleen and Kristen. They were interested in those purple horse muscles that I've been finding. So I'm actually going to the beach later today and I'm gonna collect a couple of those. Um, so I'll give you an up close look at those um, later on, probably this week when I post another video. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna jump into the shell collection now because I can't wait any longer. There's a lot of really cool stuff to go over and I will show it to you right now. So what's really interesting is that I have shells from all over the world here. So these shells here are from Fife, Scotland from Amanda, AJ and their dog Birdie. Thank you so much for sending them in. These limpets here are also from Scotland. We have some ram's horns here from Lisa and Chestnut Hill from Harns Marsh in Florida. These are freshwater. We have a, we have a knobbed whelk here from Kim in New Jersey. These are, I believe it's called a kiner whelk, which is a subspecies of the knobbed whelk. So these are called kiner whelks, and I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, let me know in the comments, but it's K-I-E-N-E-R, and they are a subspecies of the knobbed whelk, which is here. These cowrie shells here were collected in the Yucatan, along with these lace murexes and these apple murexes, and also this awesome lion's paw. This is the first time I've ever owned a lion's paw, so I'm very excited about that. So thank you so much, Kristen, who is from Yucatan. These shells over here are from Florida. The tulip, scallop, olive, and paper whelk, I believe it is, from Marie. So thank you so much, Marie. I got my first Janonia shell here, which I did not find it myself. That was also sent to me from Lisa, thank you as well as all of these amazing cone shells. Oh, and this is actually a piece of coral from the Great Barrier Reef. So we have a lot to go over and a lot to cover today, and I'm gonna jump right in. But before I do, I'm gonna tell a little bit about where these shells came from. So these shells, like the lion's paw, and these little cowries right here, they're from the Yucatan, the Yucatan Peninsula, from a small fishing village called Chichilub Puerto. It is the site where 66 million years ago, the asteroids struck the earth, killing off 75% of animal and plant life 
and it also extinct all non-avian, non-flying dinosaurs. So what's really interesting about that is when the crater was formed, it made the beach there very shallow and very flat. So you can walk out very far on that beach up to your waist in water. And they get a lot of really great shells because of the super shallow and flat submarine level there. So it's a little bit of history that I find fascinating and I hope you do too. But that's where a lot of these shells came from today. And I wanted to share that. So thank you, Kristen, for sending in the shells and also um, confirming the information that I researched. So these shells right down here, these are, well, most of them are sent to me from Amanda and AJ and Birdie, their dog Birdie, in Scotland. So I believe it is Fife, Scotland, and Amanda and AJ, feel free to correct anything that I say in this video because you two are definitely both the experts on the shells from Scotland, with the exception of this guy here. I found this on Plum Island. We'll get to that. We'll get to that in a bit. But all of these shells are from Scotland. So right here, this is a common whelk. And an interesting thing about the common whelk is they do get to about four inches. And they have both, you can't see it very well on this one, but they have both horizontal and vertical lines. And it is a univalve gastropod. We also have these on Plum Island, which I will show you the ones that I found on Plum Island in just a moment. But 70% of their body is their last whirl. So right here, this is the last whirl and it makes, a, makes up about 70% of the shell. But this is a huge one that they found in Scotland and also another one here. So you can see the size of these are very different than what we find on Plum Island. So these are the ones that were found in Scotland by Amanda and AJ and thank you so much for sending them. These are ones that I found, if I can grab them here, on Plum Island. So you can see the size difference. So this is the typical size I find. And these are from deep water, so it is very rare that I find a whole one here because they're usually pretty battered and beaten by the time they get to the shore. So these are the Plum Island common whelks. And these guys here are beautiful and they're from Scotland. They are from the North Sea. So the next shell I'm gonna talk about is a big prize shell for shellers. And this is the lion's paw. This was sent in to me from Kristen. And the reason why this is a very big prize shell for shellers is because it comes from very deep water and the shell is very, very ridged and very rugged. So if you think about this getting tossed around in the ocean over and over and over, look at all the different areas it can hit on rocks or coral and get busted up pretty easily. So to find a whole one of these fully intact on the beach is very difficult, which makes it very rare, which makes it very sought after by shellers. So this is a lion's paw. Similar to a very rare shell that we are always trying to find on Plum Island. So this is the New England Neptune, which is also a deep water shell here. So this is kind of like the lion's paw or the Genonia shell of Plum Island. I am always trying to find these intact on the beach and it's very difficult. So you can see, I get very excited when I see them laying on the sand like that and then I grab them and turn them over and I'm like, oh, it's busted. But um, very difficult shell to find, very sought after. So I feel like the New England Neptune on Plum Island is similar to the lion's paw or the Junonia shell in Florida. So this is a Junonia shell. This is very sought after. I did not find this one. This one was sent in to me by Lisa in Chestnut Hill. She found this shell on Marco Island, I believe. Lisa, if I have that incorrect, please correct me in the comments. Um, there's a lot to remember here. I am trying very hard. 
So the Genonia, it's very rare for these to wash up whole. They usually wash up after storms because they live miles offshore in 30 to 130 meters deep. So these things, making it to shore in one piece is an absolute treat. <laughs> I can't wait to find one of these. I mean, I feel like it's achievable. I feel like people have done it before, so I feel like I can do it. When I go down to visit my parents in Florida, I hope we find one of these. So this is on my list of shells to find, fully intact, along with the New England Neptune, along with the seahorse, um, and so many other ones on Plum Island that we have been looking for. But this is the Genonia shell. So thank you so much, Lisa, for sending this in. So we're gonna take a little trip over here to Scotland. This is some beautiful blue sea glass. It seems to be a lot more awesome sea glass like this along the Scotland coast. But back in the day, before it was frowned upon to throw trash into the ocean, that's what people did. They threw their trash into the ocean to be carried away. And a lot of this glass, after maybe 50 to 100 plus years, gets sea tumbled, smooth and frothy, and washes up for them to collect. But it is very beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing your sea glass collection. I know blues are very prized pieces, so thank you so much. So this is something that is very interesting as well. These are called sea bones, and this is a common thing to wash up on the beach in Scotland. And the reason why is because the mid 18th through the 20th century, Scotland was a mass producer of pottery. They had like 40 plus potteries up and down along the coast. And they had these big giant kilns that were outside because they used to fire pottery outside. And again, just like the sea glass, when they had old pieces of pottery or old pottery parts, like the kiln stilts, which are what these are, they would toss them into the ocean. So they still wash up onto the beaches in Scotland today. And people refer to them there as sea bones because that's what they look like. They look like bones from the sea. Those are very cool. Thank you for sending those in. This right here is a very cool piece of coral that was gifted to me from the Great Barrier Reef. This was like one of the first pieces of my shell collection. This is what got me addicted. What else do we have here? These we talked about in a previous video. These are the shark eyes that were sent in from New Jersey from my friend Kim. They're worth another mention because they are gorgeous. These are some fish bones fish vertebrae that I found on Plum Island. Got a bunch of them here. These are super dry and de-stinkified. <laughs> These have been outside for months. I love holding these up and looking at them closely. Really cool. Although maybe they do stink a little bit. I'm starting to smell a little bit of a funk over here. Cone shells. These were sent to me from Lisa in Chestnut Hill. So this is a textile cone. This will definitely kill you. You have to be very careful picking up cone shells. Um, we don't have any that can kill us in the US, um, but in other countries they do. So this is a textile cone. It is very venomous, very poisonous. Um, it is not the most poisonous cone. The most poisonous cone I do not have here, but it's called a geographic cone. And they also call it a cigarette cone because if you get stung by it, you have time to have one more cigarette <laughs> before you die. So that's how 
poisonous they are. Um, so cone shells in general, they all have the ability to sting a human if you pick them up. So even in areas where they're not deadly, where they don't have the deadly ones, you can still get stung by them. But the textile cone and the geographic cone is the most poisonous and have the highest levels of venom. And their shells are very beautiful. There are about 600 species of cone shells. We have a bunch of them here, but there are so many different kinds. This is a big cone. Very nice. So I feel like we got through like a lot of these. So these are tulips. This is, well, this is a tulip and this is a tulip here. This is a lightning whelk. This is a scallop. This is an olive, another lightning whelk and a paper whelk. So these were sent in from Marie from Florida. I don't think she's from Florida. The shells are from Florida. <laughs> so thank you so much, Marie. So I didn't have these laid out on the table, but these are Scotch bonnets. These were sent in by Kristen. So Scotch bonnets are a univalve gastropod mollusk, and they usually have approximately five whorls. And you can see their aperture. You can see their aperture and the lip and the shell itself is very thick. But they come in a variety of colors. They come in white, red, I've seen purple ones, spotted ones, and also their shells could be ridged, like this one here, or smooth. So scotch bottoms can also be found in Florida. These ones are from Yucatan. Females are larger than males, and they grow to be about two to five inches. So these are the cowrie shells set in by Kristen. And what's very interesting is they have a very thin aperture. And their foot or their mantle that comes out completely encompasses the entire shell. And it has these little arms on them that clean, that constantly clean and polish the shell, which is why cowrie shells are so shiny and glossy and beautiful. There's about 250 different species of cowrie shells in the world. So these here are apple murexes. These were sent in. These are beautiful. <laughs> First, they're beautiful. And they were sent in by Kristen from Yucatan. So these are apple murexes here, these three. So I have one, two, three apple murexes. And then these are lace murexes. Very beautiful. So I have four of those here. So four lace murexes and, and three apple murexes. All sent in by Kristen from Yucatan. These are common limpets that were sent in by Amanda and AJ. These were collected in Scotland. So the Scotland coastline is actually loaded with these types of common limpets and they're usually like tan and gray in color just like these are here and they adhere to all of the rocks on the coastline because they have little teeth on the bottom of their feet that scrape algae and plankton off of rocks and that's what they eat the other thing about limpets is they are stationary during the low tide when there's no water and they only become active and move around when they're submerged in water. These are some augers sent in from Amanda and AJ from Scotland. Very cool. So we talked about the common walks, we talked about the sea bones, the sea glass. This is a very beautiful oyster shell from Scotland. Loving that. Nice gold color. 
and a bunch of scallop shells from Scotland. I believe this is a flat scallop. So they find some really cool scallop shells there. Probably ones that are like bigger than the size of my palm. She sends me pictures all the time. I swoon. <laughs> this is a nice soft shell clam, which we get these here too on Plum Island. And last but not least, this is a sturgeon scoot. So this was found in one of our more recent videos on Plum Island. And when I found it, I was completely like baffled by what it was. I knew it was a bone fragment of some sort or some type of bone, but I wasn't sure. But it was identified in the comments on that video. So thank you so much for identifying that um, because we were very pleased to learn that it was a sturgeon scoot. Sturgeons are prehistoric fish. They existed at the time of the dinosaurs, um, but this is part of their body armor. They have five bony rows of scoots and it helps protect them. Atlantic sturgeons can be found from Canada all the way to Florida. They are illegal to catch and to kill, but this was a very, very cool find. And I didn't realize how rare it was until somebody put in the comments exactly what it was. So thank you so much for that. Oh, and one more thing, Judy. This is the dried purple sand from Plum Island. This is what it looks like. It is still very purpley and pinkish and beautiful. So not as dark and saturated as when it's wet, but it definitely is purple. So thank you all so much for spending Sunday morning with me, having coffee with me, talking shells with me. Thank you for sending in the shells. I love that this channel is becoming more like our channel instead of my channel, um, to be able to share shells with each other and talk about where you found them from and what kind of shells you find on your beaches. So I love this. So keep them coming. Um, I will keep making videos so that we can learn together and I will see you next time we hit the beach. Bye.